Hello! Fifth time's a charm. I've tried to record this now so many times I'm beginning to get busy. We're going to just look at uh, ZFS, a file system for you know Linux and storing things. We're actually going to use a very cheap set of drives to have a pool, a mirrored pool, where we can have multiple disks and take them away and know that we're keeping our data somewhat safe. This is not ideal. It's brilliant if you're learning about ZFS or uh, have something you critically want to keep looked after. So um, a good example might be you want to take your dissertation and make sure you keep it safe and you keep it you know, secret and whatever. You can leave this running at home and you can take this with you. Make sure that you've always got a copy. I know I've got a copy no matter where this laptop goes, no matter where those goes, I've got a copy. Um, if you're in a small office situation, it's perfect to have one of these taken out, put in the fire safe each evening, take the other one with you, you've got your offsite backup. But it's not as simple as we may want it to be. Um, there are some things we have to do first. So first things first, I have to explain something. We can look at the devices on a system. So that is my main hard drive, that's SDA, okay, with three partitions on it. This is just a spare one of the same disks. We'll just give it a moment. And we do the same thing again. And we can now see SDB with a single partition. Okay. Um, if we just did that and created our pool with the SDA, B, C, E, whatever letters come up, one day they may be put in this way, another device may be put in later changing all the device letters and completely throwing your pool for six it may completely break things so we don't want to use these letters to add to our pool instead we use these we use this is an id so we're listing the disks by id and we can actually see the data traveler here and the first partition here okay we don't care about the partition we only care about this name that that name there highlighted re represents dev slash sdb. So sdb is the shorthand way of telling the operating system this information. Every disk you have will have a unique identifier like that. Unless you've physically cloned the firmware and everything from one disk and putting it, put it into another, they're fine. If you're obviously swapping back planes of hard drives, all bets are off. I'm not telling you anything about that. But we're going to use this technique above to add all of these to this USB stick. Uh, USB hub and we're going to get all the IDs okay now the partitions aren't important so we will do some editing of the file to get rid of these we don't care about the partitions okay these disks have already been used for this task we've already done it several times to check things through so instead of one partition we'll see two on these which is uh, part one and part nine which is just the way ZFS does things don't worry about that, we'll come back to it later when we come to return a pool to the system. So let's clear the screen and let's add all of these disks in. There we go. Just give it a second. Dash ID. We'll do one at a time, so dash one, and we're going to look for just the USB. There they are, there's all the data travel. It says all three disks. That's number one, number two, number three. Okay, it's very good practice to take a note of these, take a note of the uh, dates of them or whatever. If you upgrade later, instead of having USB flash drives, so having, I don't know, two and a half inch USB physical drives, or um, as maybe a better step, two and a half inch SSDs. Uh, connected with USB to two and a half inch SATA converters, then you could do exactly the same task. So we will literally save this to disks.txt, nano disks.txt, and we can just get rid of the partitions. This is these are the drives we're going to use. What command are we going to use? Well, we'll use a command called zpool create tank mirror and it's going to mirror it between all of these so what does mirroring do well, each of these disks is 15 gigabytes or give or take change 15 um, it means that the maximum storage we'll get will be one of these disks so it's not for 
massive data processing. It's just to keep things critical, safe, or safer. Okay, we'll save that file. And then we can clear the screen. Now I've already installed Zpool. Okay, so you will want to simply do um, sudo at get install zfs utils dash linux. Okay, this will all be in the comments below. So sudo zpool status will tell us about pools on the system. There are no pools. But let's just cat drives.txt again. Of disks.txt, isn't it? Sorry. So this is the command we want to run. So we'll cp disks.txt to create zfs.sh, chmod.sx, sudo single person, create zfs.sh. And then we will do create zfs.sh. Now this is going to take a while. It's going to set up the pool for us and everything. But using that script that we've used from the uh, ls command to get the disks by ID saves us typing them in and getting them wrong. So now when we do sudo zpool status, we can see that we have a tank pool. It's online. And it's a mirror. Each of these is mirrored. Well, what does that mean for its size? df-h. There's the tank. But it's only 14 gigabytes. That's it. That's the maximum amount of stuff we can put in this. So now we've got this bit of storage, this pool, this mirrored pool. What do we do with it? Well, we use it exactly like any other piece of storage on our machine. We could um, touch a file into it. A nice old world. Oh, we don't have permission. So sudo ch own. There we go. I just had to make sure I owned it. There you go. So, you know, you could write any file in. I could put my Git repository in there. I could put files in there, documents in there, anything I want. And basically, they're written into the pool and they're there all the time. So, we check the status once more. And as we just mentioned, it is a mirror. What happens then if we take one of these out? Like that one. Well, initially, nothing. If we clear that, and do the status, it doesn't notice, nothing notices. But if we were to touch the file again, and then check the status, well, we still had no errors. But I know we have got an error, because we've taken it out. Let's touch it again. There we go. So we now see it's unavailable, corrupted data. Well, don't worry about the data bit. There is no corruption. It's actually, these two are still fine. Um, what do we do if we then return? So we can go, you know, home with this, take it on holidays, whatever we want to do that sort of keeps this data safe. But we return it to the pool the next day. So how do we clear this error? Well, the first thing you try and do is a scrub. And we scrub the tank. There we go, it's scrubbed. Now, the more data and the more drives you have, the longer a scrub will take. Okay, there are things you can do like have the ZFS intent log on another drive, or you could have faster drives in general. But this is just cheap and cheerful. Remember, so take take it as read that a scrub usually takes a long, 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 long time. So let's go back to status, and it's now online, no problem. The data is all synchronized up. And this drive now has a checksum, it's been checked, it is valid, everything's correct. That is fine. That is exactly the sort of behavior we want from this. What are the edge cases? Well, the edge case might be, let's say, the whole pool disappears. Okay, it's gone. Uh, and we remove, well, we destroy our base drive. So let's purge ZFS from the machine. So ZFS utils dash Linux and yes. So we will purge the whole ZFS from our machine. Again, these commands will be in 
the description below. It's removing it. There we go. So it's removed. So if we now do sudo z pool status, there's no z pool. There is um, this folder remaining. We could get rid of it, um, but there's nothing in there of any use for us now. It's, it's absolutely fine. If you absolutely want to make sure you can recover this pool, you could put that cache somewhere else for yourself. Um, but we'll just go back. App get install zfs utils dash mix. And yes. Okay, it's still unplugged, remember. And let's say we only want to risk one of them. These have been out, so we'll we'll just risk one so we know we've still got two copies. Just unplug that in now, let the USB settle. And of course you could reboot your machine, you could power it off, you could do all sorts. So let me clear. And then it may take a moment. We want to re-import the tank. So we can't find it. It already exists. Oh. So if it already exists, this is this is the first time it's done this. It may may have actually kept it, but we'll see. Pseudo Z pool status. It reckons everything's still online. Why well, no, it's not. Okay, so there is this problem. So we could do pseudo z pool clear tank and then do status. And we cleared this error, but we've still got problems. So let us touch the file again. There we go, we actually can't touch it. There's actually a fault there. There is actually still a fault. So when we've returned, we've got the system back. And if we check the status, there are no pools available. So how do we get this disconnected pool back in? Well, first we insert one of them. We're not risking both of them. We're just going to risk one of them. Okay, and we can uh, see if we can list them. We can't list them, but we can try and import the tank now. So this is looking for tank on this or any partitions on the machine. It's going to find this one. Let's just check the status now. We found, we found the tank. Okay, it's degraded. It knows there's only one device. We've only risked the one but it knows which device it was and because we've used these IDs it will always work for these devices okay we could add others we could remove them but these two will work so now we can return the full backup after the import by scrubbing the tank again scrubbing it could take a long long time if you've got a lot of data we now check the status and it's absolutely fine now. We've both got the same checksum because they're a mirror, they're the same as each other. So these commands will all be below, but this is a dirt cheap way of getting into ZFS, using it for something that you want to store or keep safe. Um, it's actually quite useful for uh, you know, dorm room sort of servers or small offices or anything where you've not got enterprise class stuff ready to use or you've, you've not got you know the budget. This is I think these are about nine pounds each and i think this is a 12 pound usb hub and it's as simple as that um, there'll be more information on the blog megalomaniacball.blogspot.com again link in the description happy new year everybody bye bye for now